Hello? Hello, good morning. I don't know when this is gonna go up, but as you can tell, this is a vlog. I've got quite a few things that I wanna do today. First of all, I need to pull myself together, do my makeup, get dressed, and go buy Louis some hay. And then I wanna do some housework. You might hear it in the background. The washing machine and the dishwasher are going. Then I have to sit down and play with my poly gel on my left hand because I want to get used to it before I do a video on it so I have lots of tips and tricks for you guys and then I have to edit some videos. I think I'm going to speed through this part and just do like a get ready with me montage. I'm going to listen to my podcast. I'm currently listening to Culpable. I just finished Over My Dead Body, which is by the same production studio as Dirty John. If you guys have ever listened to Dirty John, that's a good one. It's a pretty popular one. If I want to share anything about a product I'm using, I might just pause what I'm doing and talk to you about it, but I think I'm just going to try to speed through this, and I will list everything that I used in the description box below for anybody that cares. So yeah, let's get ready. micro brow pencil. I'm all out of my taupe. I'm gonna have to use my ash brown and then I'm gonna go in with this Essence eyebrow pen. I found these at Ulta and I was so excited because they've got these little trident tip applicators perfect for filling in sparse areas. The front of my brows right now are a bit sparse because I think I've been ripping them out when I have been rubbing my face with a wet towel at the end of the night to remove the dead skin between my eyes. Anyway this has really been helping me with that. It says that it's semi-permanent. I don't think I necessarily think that it's semi-permanent. It comes off with a makeup remover at the end of the night. Just draws on the perfect, most precise little hairs at the front of my brows. So I've really been liking these. I have the shades light brown and blonde. And I'm going to clean up my brow with my CoverGirl concealer. I'm just going to do a winged liner today with some half lashes on the outer corner of my eyes, mascara, a little bit of blush, and uh, I probably won't talk for the rest of this because I really need to fly through this makeup and go on about my day. <laughs>
All right, well, this is my look for the day. This has been my look for the day for the past three or four days because I haven't really done a wing liner in a million years. And I feel like with wing liner, if you don't do it for a while, it's almost like you completely forget how to do your own freaking wing liner. So I have been perfecting my wing liner again the last four days. I just absolutely love wearing half lashes when I have wing liner on. I just feel like it gives me this baby doll bedroom eye. One last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply some of my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder in the shade Medium. Listen, I'm not usually one to fucking spend an arm and a leg on a powder, but I had to try this to see what the hubbub was about. And while it feels really luxurious and it's nice to have a luxury item in my collection, I don't think this was worth however many dollars I spent on it. I don't remember off the top of my head how much it was, but I do know that I purchased it off of Netta Porter. One of you actually told me to check that website out because I also picked up one of their contour wands. I don't know if that's the right name. Let me just grab the product so I'm not butchering it. Holy shit, I actually got the name right. It's called the Hollywood Contour Wand. So I picked one of these up in the shade Fair Medium. For the price, there's like barely any product in here, but the product does work beautifully. I'm not a cream contour kind of gal. I don't really like using cream contour on myself. I feel like I've just never found one that perfectly blends out into my hairline without looking like caca. So I picked this up and it is just flawless. It is very expensive. I don't know that I'll repurchase it, but I'm gonna enjoy the shit out of it while I have it, sparingly. And um, anyway, these two products I picked up on Netta Porter, and they were cheaper on Netta Porter with the exchange rate than they were on the Sephora website with the 15% off sale. How the hell that happened, I don't know, but I'm not complaining. I got them cheaper than I would have off of Sephora. The uh, box that it comes in when you order online from Netta Porter is adorable. It's like this beautiful cardboard fancy box, black bow on it and then it comes with your receipt and this beautiful little pamphlet with like tissue paper on top. I was very impressed. I felt like a luxurious ass bitch when that arrived in the mail. Do I think this powder is worth the splurge? I don't know. Honestly, I feel like there are powders on the market that are just as good, that do the same thing. And let's be honest, for the price, there is barely any freaking product in this thing. There's eight grams of powder in here for like, what, 50 something dollars? I'll put the price up on the screen as a reminder to my Myself to never spend this kind of money on a powder again. <laughs> I was just talking about Netta Porter the other day and look at the ad that just popped up on my Instagram feed. What the fuck? They're always listening. Well, hello. Different day, same winged liner. I am just sitting at my desk doing some work. The state of my office at the moment perfectly represents the kind of day that I've had today, which is a mess. I cannot wait to eat dinner and then clean my tub and then lay in that tub for an extended period of time. I want my entire body to turn into a raisin. Well, first I'm going to shower, shave my legs, wash my hair. Maybe I'll do a hair mask before that. I haven't taken a bath in a really long time. I don't know why. I feel like I haven't had the time for a bath. And I went to Lush today and I picked up a couple bath bombs and a bubble bar. So I'm very excited for that. The reason I won't be taking a bath for a while is because tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. I gotta go get some moles removed from my stomach area. I go to the dermatologist once a year and I get skin checks because I am a very moly gal. Everybody in my family is. I don't know if it's a Romanian thing or like an Eastern European thing, but even my sister-in-law who is not related by blood is covered in them. There's a saying in Romania that when your mom kisses you as a baby, they turn into moles and the more moles you have, the more that you were kissed as a baby. Well, let me tell ya, I must have been really loved. Some of them are really small, like just little dots on my body. Others 
are a little bit more concerning or were a little bit more concerning because the ones that have concerned me in the past, I've had cut out. It sounds really aggressive to say I've had them cut out, but it's the only way that I can describe it because when you're getting them removed, at least mine, the ones that have been bigger, like I can hear freaking cutting into the skin and it just gives me the heebie-jeebies. It's like some cannibal level shit. Like I can feel it, I can hear it. I was debating maybe wearing earplugs tomorrow so I don't have to hear the snips, but I'll still be able to feel them. And by feel them, I mean like the pressure, not the feeling because the area gets numbed. Why am I telling you all of this, you ask? Well, it's because I'm your friend and I just want to remind you of the importance of taking care of your skin. I don't know about everybody else, but in my life, I probably only know one other person who goes to the dermatologist regularly to get their skin checked out and that would be my sister-in-law. Other than that, I don't really hear a lot of people talking about it and I don't think people really pay attention to their moles and I think that's a mistake. I think that if you have moles, it is important to not only monitor them on your own, but if you can, to try to get regular skin checks to, just to make sure that everything is okay and that you don't have any that look weird that need to be removed because I don't like to use the C word because it freaks me the fuck out, but it is very common in skin and it's very preventable if you just keep an eye on your skin and the moles that you might have. Like I said, I go in regularly and I get them removed. It's the only way that I can sleep at night peacefully is if I go in and I get the ones removed that I think look funky. Sometimes my dermatologist will tell me like, no, it's fine because he looks at it really close up with like a microscope when I'm in there. But this past time I noticed that there was a change in one on my stomach because I am a psycho. Like I said, I tend to have more moles than your average bear. So I monitor myself very closely and and I photograph every fucking spot on my body and I have a little folder in my phone where I monitor the changes in moles. I can usually just monitor them by looking at them, like I can tell if something has changed, especially if it's on my stomach, where I see it every day, but I'll even contort myself into all sorts of positions so that I can correctly photograph moles on my back or my side. I get Chris to check them out sometimes. But anyway, I keep a catalog of these things. And the last time that I went to my dermatologist, I told them, you know, this one was really small the last time I came in and it's looking fucking weird and I'm not liking it. And he said, yeah, it is is kind of weird and I would recommend maybe just cutting it out just to be safe. So that is what is happening tomorrow. Moving forward for the next few weeks I won't be able to take like long ass showers where I have fake arguments in my head and waste time standing there until I turn into a raisin. I won't be able to take a bath for a while because of the stitches. I really can't get the area very wet so I'm gonna get that all out of my system tonight. I'm not really nervous about tomorrow because like I said I have had this done a few times. I know the process. I know what to expect. Because these moles are on my stomach, like right front and center, I am a little bit nervous about the way that he's going to cut them out and how large the stitches are going to be. It's my stomach and while I only really care about my health, I don't really care about scars, I know that, you know, down the road I would like to have babies and I know that my stomach is going to blow up and I know that those scars are going to stretch so I'm hoping that they will heal as nicely as my other scars. I have two really big scars on my back that are actually like they're big but they're not hideous because I took care of them and I have one on my rib cage that healed up really nicely so I'm hoping the ones on my stomach will heal up just as nicely as the ones on my rib cage. Anyway, just a friendly reminder because we are friends and I care about you that I think you should take care of your skin and monitor it and if you can go get your moles checked out if you have them. If you don't you probably don't need to worry about it. Your skin is your largest organ, so it is important to take care of it. I gotta go make food and clean my tub now. I'll talk to you in a bit. And don't let me catch you forgetting to wear your sunscreen, okay? Okay, it is finally bath time. I ate dinner, I cleaned my tub, I got a hair mask in, I'm gonna go shave my legs, and I'm gonna prep my tub. I tend to run my water really hot, and I always have to let it cool for about 15 minutes before I get into it, otherwise I will cook in it like a little lobster. So let's just go over some of the Lush products I picked up. I actually just picked up three, there's not much in here. A comforter bubble bar. One of my favorite Lush scents. This creates so many freaking bubbles. I get so many uses out of it and I haven't had it in a really long time because like I said, I don't really take baths all that often anymore and I think it's because I cannot take a bath without showering and cleaning myself first. So by the time I get out of the shower, I'm just ready to get into my cozies and get into bed. I don't want to run hot water again and get into the bath. Is anybody else like that? I'm pretty sure everyone showers before they get into the bath. Otherwise, you're floating around 
down in like dirt water, no? I also got an Avo Bath bath bomb. I haven't had this in a long time and it's super moisturizing and delicious. But I also picked up Twilight and I really like to use Twilight with Comforter. I feel like these two scents together are just super heavenly and Twilight makes me sleepy. But I really love Avo Bath because it makes my skin super soft. So what do I do? I've totally become that person with two mismatched hands. I like to keep this one bare so I can practice polygel and on this one I'm currently testing a nail recovery kit for a future video. And in case you're wondering, this little number is a china glaze polish. I'll put the name of it on the screen somewhere. <laughs> thought I'd check in real quick to let you know that yesterday's mole removal went great. The incisions were way smaller than I thought they were gonna be. I didn't see them because I couldn't look and now I have bandages over them, but I saw the surgeon draw where he was going to make the incisions and it looks like he kept it just around the borders, which is super nice. I asked him why the ones on my back were so big. A, it's because the moles were way bigger, but B, because he thought the roots went a little bit deeper and he wanted to make sure to get like every last bit out of there, so he had to make a larger incision which makes total sense. I am now healing. I can take my bandage off tomorrow. Today's shower was very interesting. I had to bend into a pretzel to get all the areas that needed to be cleaned clean without getting my stomach wet. I don't have a shower head that I can like remove and use on certain areas. I actually broke into a sweat in the shower. Good thing I was in the shower. So anyway, the moles are gone. Hopefully I don't hear back because no news is good news. I am now going to clean my office. Somehow things got real crazy in here and my desk is just covered in shit. I now take this moment to warn you about what you are about to witness in this vlog. It is very cute. Some might say too cute. Okay, so prepare yourselves. Even editing this portion of the vlog was very difficult for me. I rewound it maybe 50 times. Welcome to Salon Reens. This is the nail content that you guys signed up for, right? So this here is Louis' mani-pedi session. I try to cut his nails as often as I can. He will not allow anybody but me to cut his nails. He doesn't like getting it done at the vet. Chris and I used to cut his nails together, but it kind of turned into a production. So now him and I just sit on the bathroom floor and we bond. It actually does bring us closer together. Every time I cut his nails, he just turns into a pile of mush in my lap. And I think he knows that I love him and I just want to make him feel better. So he eventually surrenders to me. I normally try to time his mani-pedi sessions with when my nails are short because it is so much easier for me to grab his nails when I have short nails. In addition to trimming his nails, I also trim the fur underneath his back feet because it gets really out of control and I've noticed that he stands on them at an angle when there's too much fluff underneath there. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this nail content. <music>
Somebody has earned himself a treat. Move on. Come on. Wow. <laughs> now you want to be all over me. You wanted nothing to do with me earlier. Huh? Spooky season is almost upon us, which means Home Sense and Michaels have started to roll out their fall and Halloween decor. I am here for it. Luckily, I was able to snag these. These were the only Halloween mugs on the shelf. I cannot wait to see what else they have in store for us. Are these cauldrons? Yes, they are. Look at these adorable, stubby little feet. I'm dying. I cannot handle this cuteness. So that one says Witch's Brew. This one says Happy Halloween. I had to get them both. And they were $5.99 each. Like, I'm gonna use this tomorrow. I don't care that it's August. It could be January and I would still be drinking out of this mug, okay? And while I'm sharing this with you, I might as well share things I picked up from Michaels and Sally Beauty. Let's start with Michaels. I got this six pack of acrylic paint. These are all neons and then there's one glow in the dark shade in here. I really wanna do nude nails with neon ombre tips and I feel like this acrylic paint is just gonna be great for that. If you guys have seen my uh, French ombre gel nail tutorial, you'll know that I like to use acrylic paint when doing an ombre and I'm really hoping that these ones are good quality. If not, I'll just go back to Michaels and get better quality ones. Got a couple things from Sally Beauty some nail polish thinner. I really want to do a nail polish declutter video and I know that there are some polishes I want to get rid of but there are also some of my favorites in there that have really dried up and I want to see if I can revive them. I don't even know why I'm keeping any nail polishes to be honest because I mainly use gel polish on my nails now. It just lasts so much longer than regular nail polish but sometimes I like to use regular nail polish on my toes so I feel like that's going to be a really good video. I have a lot of nail polish and there's a lot of really dried up shit in my collection that is gonna be so fun to revive. I don't know why I get really satisfied when I find like a really terribly dried polish and I can bring it back to life. So this is gonna come in handy for that. I also picked up a couple nail files. This is a 180 over 180 grit and then I got this one here which is a bit smoother, 220 over 320. And then I got this little filing stick. This will come in handy when I'm cleaning up my cuticle area. If I have any like leftover dead skin, this tip will help me to get really close up to the cuticles. I got this Cricut FF60 lifting and teasing comb. Apparently it's friction free for less damage and more shine. I was just looking for a back combing comb and um, I like that it has these little metal rods on the bottom for parting the hair. Hopefully this is good. And then I got a little combo pack of wet look wide tooth combs. I guess I just didn't have any wide tooth combs and sometimes they come in handy. I also picked up a bottle of 100% pure acetone from Walmart because I was all out. All right, that completes this vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. As you can see, I'm editing it in the background. Almost everything that I talked about in this video will be listed in the description box below. I say almost because there's no way that I can link those magnificent mugs, which were a very lucky find. I still can't get over how cute they are. Thank you guys very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and staying subscribed and I'll see you in my next one. Okay, love you, bye.